Salam, my brothers and sisters. This is part two, as promised. Now we're gonna. We, in the last video, we spoke about metabolism, which is very important. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes. Let's get technical. Let's go down and dirty. Let's talk about your glycogen levels and why is it important and how we sh and we should understand it. Why we should understand it. All right. What are glycogen levels? Glycogen levels are basically the food that you eat, which is converted into energy, which is stored in uh, your body. Now, we have two fuel tanks, let's say. I'm going to use the metaphor of a car again. All right, so we have a primary fuel tank and we have a backup fuel tank. So your primary fuel tank would be the food that you ate, which has been converted already, which is stored in your muscles and in your liver. So these are the primary fuel tank. The backup fuel tank would be your fat stores. Now, fat stores are, a, your fat is a different tissue than the muscle. It's two different tissues. They don't convert into each other. They don't, you know, it's not like if you stop working out and your muscle turns into fat or fat turns into, no, no, they're two separate tissues. If you look at the tissue, it's a completely different tissue. One doesn't convert into the other. It's completely different tissues. So your fat tissue is just the secondary fuel tank. Now, in order, so for us, what we're interested in, we want to get rid of the fat tissue. How do you get rid of the fat tissue? Well, in order to get to the fat tissue, you must burn away your fat stores, your glycogen levels that you have in your primary fuel tank. So you have to burn the, the carbs that you ate, the food that you ate. You, ha you need to deplete your primary tank in order to get to your secondary tank. This is a very important concept. Uh, people don't seem to get this. Once again, it's not intuitive, so you have to understand this. So you need to first deplete your glycogen levels your, your, your primary fuel tank, once you've gone through that, then and only then will your body tap into the alternate fuel tank, which is the fat tissue. The problem is most people never deplete their primary tank. They never deplete their glycogen levels. So they never lose fat. It, because it, they take in the food, when you work out, it, it takes the food from your muscles uh, and, and from your liver. and it's just a cycle back and forth. So they eat, they burn off what's in their, in their primary tank, they eat again, they burn off what's in their primary tank. So they never actually get to the fat stores. So our concern is, our interest is to get to the fat stores. That's where you're actually gonna see some fat loss. Uh, let me give you a little like, example also. I gained about two, three pounds in the last two weeks, okay? I went from 157 to about 160. So two, three pounds in the last two weeks. Now. Does that mean I actually gained three pounds of fat? In order for me to gain three pounds of fat, that would mean that I ate an excess of 7,000 calories above and beyond my daily caloric intake. So my daily caloric intake, let's say, is 2,000 calories per day. So at the end of the week, I eat uh, 14,000 calories. So does that mean that I ate you know, 3,500 extra calories during the week? in order for me to lose the, uh, to, to gain two pounds at the end of two weeks? No, there's no way I ate that much more calories. All it is is I've been eating a little bit more carbs, just a couple of hundred calories more, and carbs, we know that carbs, one part carb, your body will store one part carb with three to four parts water. So every time your body holds on to carbs, it holds on to water at the same time. So this is why when you guys uh, work out, you feel, when you eat carbs, you look bigger, but you also look more puffy. You're, you're, you look puffier, but it's, it's because the body's actually holding on to more water. So if you want that lean look, you need to drop your carbs. You drop your carbs, your body gets rid of the water, so you have a more drier look. So this is a quick way, so when you're gaining weight in a short period of time, within a week or two weeks, you, you see that you gained a pound or two pounds, that's not fat. All you're doing is manipulating your glycogen stores. You probably had a little bit, uh, a little bit more carbs than you're used to, so the body's holding the carbs. It's holding the water with the carbs. That's all it is. Drop the carbs, they'll drop the water. So, how do we effectively get to the fat stores? So, first thing we need to know is, first thing we need to do is we need to deplete our primary tank. How do we deplete the primary tank? First, you have to deplete your carbs. Carbs are, and it's important that we have to note that it's carbs that affect our glycogen stores more than protein and more than fat. Carbs are the body's primary source of fuel. It looks for carbs, so you, by carbs, carbohydrates. So you need to cut your carbohydrates, reduce your uh, carbohydrates, 
for a couple of days in a row. This will start to deplete your glycogen stores. Compounded with that, you need to do exercise, in particular cardiovascular exercise. There's depletion exercises, there's depletion workouts that you can do. Those are generally weight training sessions with a lot of volume, a lot of sets. So the idea is it's a cardiovascular type workout, a lot of volume, no rest, the intensity is really, really high, so you're trying to burn off as much as possible. That's from the workout side. From the diet side, you need to just deplete your carbs a little bit on an on a, on a extended period. As you deplete your carbs and you do more and more cardio, your primary uh, fuel tank will decrease. Once you decrease the primary fuel tank, then your body has no choice. It'll go into the secondary fuel tank, which is the fat cells. The problem is when you deplete your glycogen levels, it's an uncomfortable state for the body because you're tired, you're lethargic, you need also you need the, uh, the carbs for your mind, your, your, your brain function, stuff like that. So you can't be depleted in a depleted glycogen state too long. You have to kind of go back and forth. You have to deplete and then fill up your glycogen levels. You deplete and fill up. When you start doing this, when you start uh, you know, uh, consciously impacting your glycogen levels, consciously depleting it and filling it up, your body actually gets efficient at doing that. Most people don't, like I said, they don't deplete their uh, primary fuel tank, so your body becomes inefficient. It just doesn't uh, you know, uh, deplete it like it should. So when you start doing it consciously, effectively, knowing how to do it, your body becomes more efficient at it. So it will automatically start to regulate itself and deplete the, uh, the primary fuel tank and tap into your alternate fuel tank, which is your fat stores. So this is what we want to do. Um, what else can I say? Okay, another, another effective way of burning fat is to work out on an empty stomach. This is the most effective way to get to the secondary fuel tank. Now, when I say on an empty stomach, I mean first thing in the morning. So your last meal is 10 hours ago, you ate last night, you just got up, your glycogen levels are low automatically. If you do it during the day, it's not the same. You know, people say you should work out on an empty stomach. On an empty stomach, when you work out during the day, just because you feel hungry doesn't mean it's an empty stomach. You still have food, your, your body's still gonna tap into the primary fuel source. When you work out in the morning on an empty stomach, now your glycogen levels are low, your primary fuel tank is low, now you are truly, now you are truly hitting the secondary uh, fuel tank. Now you're hitting the fat cells. This is where real fat loss occurs. So you should do it on an empty stomach, a completely empty stomach. Like I said, if you do it later on in the day, it's not the same. Uh, you, so you must do it early in the morning and the exercises have to be more cardiovascular type or uh, lots of volume and lots of sets. That's the most effective way to get to fat loss. So f my point being throughout this whole thing is you need to deplete your primary fuel tank, you need to get your glycogen levels low, then you can tap into the fat cells with cardiovascular workout, but you need, don't stay that, at that point too long. You need to then fill up and then do, do, do a cycle. Keep repeating that cycle. It's important to note, so you should cycle this, so you need to deeply and then fill up. Deeply and fill up because your body will become efficient at that. So by depleting, the best way is early in the morning, first thing in the morning, your glycogen levels naturally are low because you didn't eat anything. You do a cardiovascular workout or a uh, weight training session with a lot of volumes, a lot of sets, no rest, high intensity. This will tap directly into your fat stores because it has no choice. It has no food in the primary fuel tank. And this is the best way, most effective way, most efficient way of losing fat. Once you've done that, you need to fill up your primary fuel tank. You need to fill it up because now you need to recuperate. If you stay in that state for too long, once again, red flags go off. Hey, I'm not getting food. I'm in a depleted state for too long. Your body, once again, is going to slow down the metabolism. So you cycle it. You go, you, f you deeply fill up, deeply fill up, deeply exercise, tap into the secondary uh, fuel source, the fat cells, fill it up. And then you keep going over and over. I hope that makes sense. I hope this is useful. Please make dua for us. Don't remember us in your duas. 
Have a great day. Salam. Thanks for watching.